was maneuvering things and uh, the end, of, end result was to be his, his crucifixion. Amen. <clears throat> and as I said, uh, even, even though today is Palm Sunday, um, the Christian church generally focuses on the crucifixion on Good Friday. Um, we will not. We're going to focus on today. Um, I, I, because I, I think I can get more of you here on this Sunday morning than, than on Friday evening. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> Jesus wasn't crucified on a Friday anyway. But that's another Sunday. <coughs> Have you, ever, have you ever tried to figure out how uh, Jesus spent three days and three nights in the tomb from Friday evening to Sunday morning? Does it make your head hurt? Yeah, okay, that's because it was, it's a misunderstanding of Scripture. There were two Sabbaths that way. That's, uh, I'll give you that much for, for those of you who want to dig. All right, but today we're going to talk about <clears throat> the greatness of the cross. Uh, pray with me for a moment. Father, we thank you. But I thank you for your word. I thank you for how you, how you gave your word to me, Lord. How, how, how it blessed my heart. Blew me away in the cross. Lord, now help me to speak it under your anointing. Under your anointing. Your anointing, oh God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the greatness of the cross. The cross has been a, uh, a, a worldwide symbol of Christianity, and so it should be. And uh, we <laughs> see that the cross is uh, despised by those who don't care for Christianity. The cross is a wonderful thing. Jesus even invited us all to have one of our own. Take up your cross and follow. Now when we look at Jesus, Jesus is hailed all over the world as being a great prophet. True. Oh, but he didn't come to be a prophet. No, not at all. He's hailed all over the world for being a great teacher. It's true. But he didn't come here just to be a teacher. He's hailed all over the world as being a miracle worker. How he walked on the water and raised Lazarus from the dead and healed the, uh, the, the sick and the lepers and opened the eyes of the blind and so on and so forth. All these things are true. But he didn't come here to be a healer. Paul tells us in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, as it describes Jesus as, as God. <clears throat> he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, Visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And when Jesus came here, he didn't come here just to be created. 
although he was the creator. He came for an even greater purpose. And that's where the cross comes in. And everything that you and I enjoy as Christians, the grace, God's blessing, <clears throat> God's favor, the grace, the grace, the grace, the grace, and the grace <laughs> comes to us by the cross. It's all about the cross. Why did Jesus come here? Well, at the beginning of uh, Jesus' story, you know the story that we all often <coughs> quote around Christmas about how the angel came to Mary, the Virgin Mary, and told her, you're going to have a baby. <coughs> and uh, it's going to be the Son of God, this child. And Mary accepted it. Mary was engaged to be married. She was, was betrothed to a guy named Joseph, the carpenter. And uh, it, it blows me away how the Lord evolved this, this whole story because before Mary, uh, had, had, before Joseph and Mary had ever come together as husband and wife in sexual union, she was pregnant. Now, sister was supposed to be a virgin when they came together. But when she probably had a moment there where she told Joseph, I'm pregnant mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph said, Right. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> And he had it in his mind to uh, divorce her quietly. Even though they were engaged, he, they were still considered married. He, was, he had it in his mind to divorce her quietly rather than to expose her to public disgrace, as the Bible says, which would probably have gotten her stoned to death. And an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, <clears throat> Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. Now the name Jesus or in, in the Hebrew, Yeshua, <coughs> means Jehovah saves. Okay, that's, so that's why the angel said that. You're giving the name Jesus. Why? Because the name means Jehovah saves. Because Jesus will save his people from their sins. Okay, so here we get to the, the real reason why Jesus came here. <coughs> Again, he didn't come to be a prophet, although he prophesied. He didn't come to be a teacher, although he taught mightily. He didn't come just to be a miracle worker, although he, he, he blew them all away with the miracles. And, and, and indeed, they were demonstrations of his authority because he was the creator. He didn't come here just to create although he did create while he was here. His first public miracle was to turn water into wine and snack to creation. He came here, as the angels said, because he was, because Jehovah saves. He came to be a savior. Everybody say a savior. savior. Say it again, a, a savior. Savior. Jesus came to be a Savior. I think 
And this is some of the stuff that was, that was moving away as I was contemplating the word and putting it together. Another passage that we read all the time at Christmas. Wow. Out, of, uh, out of Luke chapter 2. You know, you know it. Um, we grew up listening to it when you watched Charlie Brown. <laughs> Charlie Brown's Christmas. What's Christmas all about, Charlie Brown? And the line just gets up on the stage and quotes from Luke chapter 2. And there were shepherds keeping watch over their flocks by night. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around the mountain. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. You see, as we celebrate Christmas, it's all about the birth of the Christ child. And we're celebrating that Mary had a little baby. And the baby was Jesus. But that's appropriate for the holiday. But it's treating the text too lightly. Because there's so much more here. Okay. Um, the angel came to announce the birth of a savior. <clears throat> he says, I bring you good news of great joy that's to be for all the people. What's the good news, angel? For, for to you is born this day in the city of David a savior, a savior who is Christ the Lord. That's what Jesus came here uh, to do and to be. To be the Savior. And, and it says, then suddenly there appeared with the angel an army of the troops of heaven. Now this is out of the Amplified. Okay, because if you read this normally like in the NIV or the King James, it says, and suddenly there appeared the angel, a great company of the heavenly hosts, singing glory to God in the highest. A great company of the heavenly hosts. I said, wait a minute. Now we, we, we see that pictured as, oh, uh, 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 a, a big chorus of little chubby babies wings, singing glory to God in the highest, you know what I mean, and all that sort of stuff, how this stuff is portrayed for us by various artists, but no, the Bible says a great company of the, the hosts of heaven, the heavenly hosts, and all throughout scripture, the hosts of heaven are angelic soldiers, okay, the, the, the hosts of heaven. And so I looked this up in the, in the Amplified, and there it was. There it was, and I, and I put that on the, on the page in my notes. Suddenly there appeared with the angel an army of the troops of heaven, a heavenly knighthood, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace among men with whom he is well pleased. Men of good will, of his favor. And you see, this is the part that, this is what grabs him. When Jesus was born, <coughs> the armies of heaven came the, the, the heavenly knights, the mighty angels, armed for battle. Those angels 
angels didn't show up. And praise God because Mary had a little baby. This was this moment that the angel was announcing the birth of this child was heaven's great offensive to push back the darkness and, and break the power of sin over all of humanity. Amen. Okay, because a savior had been born. Amen. And, and remember, the, the angel told Joseph, name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Yes. And their sins is the, what brings the darkness. Sin brings darkness upon the lives of people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Those who live in sin live in darkness. Many live in darkness and think that's all there is. What's the matter with those stupid Christians? Lord have mercy. Pray for them. So this is, and, and this scene here is why when Isaiah prophesies about this moment, and he does, that moment that, that the angel was there proclaiming to the shepherds, Isaiah prophesied about that in Isaiah chapter 9. He says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of intense darkness and the shadow of death upon them, a light has shone. See, uh, the, the darkness is the sin and the light is Jesus. Yes. It's the light of the Savior. And, and, and this is in verse 2. As he starts talking about the great light shining in the, into the deep, intense darkness. And you go down a few verses into verse 6. As he continues to talk about this light, this Savior, we get that other famous passage that we read about in Christmas. <coughs> For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace because he brings salvation. And, and if, if you read the writings of the Apostle Paul throughout the New Testament, the, the peace is about peace between us and God. The, 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 the barrier wall of hostility between us and God, uh, which exists, it's called sin, and Jesus came to wash that away, to wipe it away. Because of the cross, we are now reconciled to God through the sacrificial shedding of his blood for us on the cross, on the cross. You know, we read from Colossians 1, where it describes the, the supremacy of Christ. Back to Colossians 1, just for a moment. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. Talking about Jesus. And through him to reconcile to himself all things. The, the word reconciled make, it means to make peace. All things. <coughs> to make peace with all things. And as the, as the reconciliation continues to spread around the world and, and it will spread big time uh, as the Lord comes to establish his kingdom. And, and you get those scriptures like out in Isaiah. Uh, where it says that the wolf shall, shall lie down with the lamb. Okay, and the, and the, and the cow, and the, the lion and, and the cow lay down together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. 
That's, that's, that's the reconciliation of all things. You see even uh, the, the creatures, the, the predators that would kill to eat. Uh, they don't do that anymore. Because God has reconciled all things to himself. This Jesus coming to be set the Savior um, is to spread for the entire planet, not just every human being, but the planet itself. See, this is huge. This is huge. Look at verse 20. Through him, and says, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Jesus came here to shed his blood on the cross. He came to be a savior. That's why we're focusing on the cross today. He says, once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to, to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. You mean I can be reconciled to God and, and be free from accusation? Yes, you can. But, but I'm not perfect. He will declare you perfect. As you go on and follow him. By one sacrifice he has declared perfect forever those who are being made holy. Amen. And remember when I said that it had to be a cross? Why did it have to be a cross? You know, Jesus came and shed his blood. People shed blood in many different ways. Maybe, you know, they had the, the Roman soldiers. They had the Romans. They, they had plenty of archers. They could have stood them up against the wall and did a firing squad with arrows. The Apostle Paul had his head chopped off. They could have beheaded him. That was considered a humane way uh, for Roman citizens to be executed because it was considered and easy. Why did they hang him on a cross? Why didn't that I should say, why did it have to be a cross? And I, and I say that it does. Matthew in Galatians chapter. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. As it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on the tree. That's why I have to be a cross. Jesus became a curse for us. Jesus literally took on the sins of the world. I mean, they, I mean literally. They were heaped upon him. And as they, as he took on the sins of the world, and Jesus became that ugly, dark, darkened thing in the eyes of God. And, and God turned away from his son and said, I can't stand him. And Jesus immediately felt the disconnect. And he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Okay. That's, that's when he was becoming a curse. The cross. It's all about the cross. The grace that we enjoy. The love that we get from God, the answers to prayer, it's all about the cross. Are you going to heaven? <coughs> Some say, I hope you know. I hope you know whether you're going to heaven or not. If you if you belong to Jesus, if you've submitted your life to Him, if you've asked Him to be the Lord, and the Lord Lord means 
boss, okay? If you've asked him to be the Lord of your life, you're, you're on your way. You go to heaven when you bring your last. And it's because of the cross. I am so thankful for the cross. The words of the old hymn came to my mind. I put these verses <clears throat> together. What thou, my Lord, hast suffered, t'was all for sin's gain. Mine, mine was the transgression, but thine the deadly pain. Oh, make me thine forever, and should I faint to be, Lord, let me never, never outlive my life. I love those words because they mean my heart, and I have said amen to them, and I mean that. Lord, if, I'm, if I get to the place where I'm about to fall away, don't let me outlive my life. Take me. Stop my heart. Should I fainting be, Lord, let me never, never <clears throat> the thing about the cross is that every single one of us must come to the foot of the cross and submit our lives. Declare him as the Lord of our lives. Pray with me now. Everybody bow your heads and listen. If you have not made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I give you the opportunity to do that now, and I, I would encourage you to stop playing around, fooling around with your soul. Amen, amen. But there is a heaven to seek and hell to shun. If you want to give your life to Jesus, pray to this with me right now. Jesus, forgive me for my sins and come into my life and be the Lord of my life. I, I just, I need you, God. Forgive me, God, for my sins. Again, I say forgive. I believe that you died on the cross for me and that you rose again on the third day. Um, and there is no Lord but you. You're the only way to heaven. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord have all the rest of us.